sort of, um, to select an area of interest and to begin to draft a letter of intent. And then we have two meetings on, on Thursday the 31st, um, one a pre-meeting and then one a broader meeting. And I think everybody should have links to those meetings as well, right? No. No. You guys don't? I think um, no. Chris, Chris Clem sent them to all of us. Oh, okay. Um, in his messages. Hi, Beth. Um, <laughs> um, okay. okay. Uh, Nancy, question. You said area of interest. Can we have multiple areas? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and there can be multiple applications as I understand it. So, um, so you guys, I think I don't have any experience with these grants. So, um, be, be, who has done one before? Bob and Richard, anybody else? Clarissa? I've done all yeah. sorts of grants, but I don't. Um, but for this, for the I've Bob never done this one, but no, not tons no. of them. Okay. So, has <laughs> anybody. Anybody worked with these grants before? No, uh, okay. I did. I did though go on the website, and um, they did have an amendment. So the letter of intent is now due April eleventh. Oh, April that's 11th. good. I yeah, didn't know if any, everybody knew that. Uh, Richard sent out an email with um, some links on it that I couldn't connect to. Neither could I, Bob. So yeah. I went into the actual okay. website. So, yeah, I was able to okay. see some of the, they, he, one of the links did work for me. It was just some of the past grants and things that they have funded. Mm -hmm. I was able to see those. And you can, you can get it pretty easily um, if you go to the National Scenic Byways Grant Program. Mm -hmm. okay. um, they have, the letter of intent is a fillable type of, um, God, fillable. It's pretty, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty, form. pretty straightforward. And then the um, the information about the grant is in another document with all sorts of links to thing you know to examples that they think are good and examples that they think are less good. So there's yeah. there's like a ton of information on there. Yeah. Okay. I didn't have trouble opening the ones that that I tried, but I didn't go deep into the examples and that whatnot. So we obviously um, applied for. Um, byway grant money previously. That's how we got the corridor management plan. So um, we have that experience. And um, well, that uh, was really the MAPC that did that. They they were the ones that gave us the original grant. Right, but we initiated it, obviously. Well, anyway, for for this so. um, for the National Scenic Byways Program grants, um, just to quickly review. Um, there are these four project goals, safety, equity, and accessibility, economic strength, climate, and sustainability. And then there are eight primary project types. So does everybody have those in front of them? Because yep. I think that might be helpful. Uh, so I, I guess um, if people have, have ideas or thoughts, I don't so, see why we we want to go after multiple grants. I think that's, and this is our first year. I think we should go after one grant. Make it simple. Yep. Yeah. Um, so. Um, I, I don't agree Jayla, with that, but yeah. okay. <laughs> Jayla and um, Jean Krieger and myself. Off to a good start. <laughs> myself and um, um, Ross Morrow did get together to talk about a little bit to see from Lexington's perspective what we thought. And what we ended up looking at is saying, we should have a project that um, benefits all five entities. Um, and um, we talked about what are the things in the court of management plan that need to be done that might help that. And um, we talked about two things. One is the signage program. And the other is looking at um, safety and accessibility and stewardship amongst um, the, um, along the whole byway. And um, so with that in mind, um, um, I did take a look at what potential things are available. And um, I um, put some ideas down in terms of um, 
uh, how we would leverage um, um, a project to fit in with MassDOT's goals and with some regional things, as well as um, um, how do we get to be a favored status for the uh, reviewers. And so I tried to look at um, a project in, in that light. And I did draft up a couple of things. Okay, if, did anybody else have drafts or anything to start off with? So we can um, plan for I, that conversation. I, um, I didn't draft anything, but I, I think Richard's dead on. If we can pull things out of the corridor management plan and tie those directly, that gives us the best chance for it to receive favorable viewing. Um, personally, I, I think safety is what I would focus on if I had if I had my choice, I think it's the one of the biggest things that's universal to all properties, um, that, uh, all five entities. And you know, I just think the I I say that knowing that we need to work with MassDOT, so we need to make sure that anything that we require funding for is totally within our purview. Um, so that is my only concern with going after something like that. Um, those are just my thoughts. I think. I think we need to tie it directly to the quarter management plan. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, for me, it would be, be safety um, would be. Something I think that one of the, I agree with you, Beth. I think one of the things we should do, if that seems to be the area of interest, is go to the planning departments and the DPWs in each town and to the park and talk to them about what are their concerns. Because I don't think we can do this in a vacuum without the people that deal with the safety issues every day because okay. they're the ones that really know this, this has to have an enormous um, public process and it will require buy-in from the um, towns um, uh, dpws engineering and a whole bunch planning. of stakeholders and planning oh so, yeah. so i would just i just say <laughs> starting out again um one of the primary project types and we haven't mentioned it and it's, it's something that I think sometimes gets short shrift is the protection of scenic historical, recreational, cultural, natural, and archeological resources. So I wanna put that forward um, as, um, as something that we need to be working on. And um, Paul said something at the last meeting about something, you know, things that tie together the entire byway through urban areas, through, through the more undeveloped area within the National Park and on out to Barrett's Mill Farm. So they're very different kinds mm -hmm. of landscapes. And um, I think we should be thinking about the protection of all those scenic and historical things that are a big part of the basis for the byway. I think that's a great idea, Nancy. Can I ask because a question? Because I think- yeah. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, Clarissa, go ahead. No, go ahead. Bob, go ahead. Uh, is there a geographic footprint involved in these uh in the availability of this money since it's funneling through the highway department the mass dot mm -hmm. does it have to be something in mass dots right of way or no can it, you know it's no. not okay but obviously there are two sections of the byway that are within mass dots purview mm -hmm. okay I'm sorry, so, Clarissa, go ahead. You were, no, no, I said when I, I think it's a great idea. I think the archeological and historic character of, you know, you look at a place like Lincoln or the park, it's much more intact than in my beloved town of Arlington. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, having a way of preserving, you know, looking at the historic resources. And I think that um, the last meeting, Paul Fenley brought up the foot of the rocks um, which is something we've been trying to work on for years, and now we have something in order. I think the protection of those historic resources it what is what makes the Battle Road work. And I think that you know the Lexington Green, the Concord, um, all the Concord sites are what makes it special. That's why people are going to come to the Battle Road Scenic Byway. I mean that's that's right. I mean I think that's much easier to do than to do something as broad as safety. I think the archeological, um, and I think that would look, be looked at very favorably from 
the Commonwealth. Um, because I think I, I had the pleasure of meeting the superintendent and her interest in protecting those sites near the Route 2A project is, is tremendously important. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that um, we should be all aware of where these archeological sites are and protect them as much as we possibly can. Okay, so that would uh, encompass things outside the national park, but oh, within yeah. the scenic byway, is that right? Right, I, I think yeah. Yeah. we need something that's gonna benefit all five entities. Okay. Well, they all have historic resources. Yeah, and sometimes they're right along the byway and sometimes yeah. they're, they're off off on, on spurs. And so I think we have one to of the focus things on the that, you know, The guidelines say we shouldn't think of anything that's going to cost less than a half a million dollars. Um, that's sort of what they recommend. And um, so I think because we're the only All America one in Massachusetts, we should be trying to figure something that might have a scope of a, maybe even up to two million. And if they tell us we can't have that much, then we can scale back. Well, maybe maybe we go back to the signage idea. That the mm -hmm. signage idea is. What we're looking at for, um, and I, th I think that, you know, having more signage, we have some beautiful signage that was designed early on mm -hmm. that we've, I believe only Lexington has used. And, you know, doing more with, you know, that and having, you know, a, um, a program that talks about the signage and the archeological and historic resources, I think would be great. And that would be, Certainly with, that would probably be a million dollars at the most. Yeah. A question, so I, um, uh, mechanically here, can money go to the national park uh, from this grant? Because it's weird if it's coming from the federal government, funneling through the state, back yeah. to the national park. Is that doable? So um, <laughs> you know, we have to figure out who our partners are and how how things work like for instance for the corridor management plan um, we asked for mapc to be the uh, lead um, agency to help get the corridor management plan done um, so we can partner with whomever we think we need to partner with and whether the park has additional monies or separate monies or if we want them to be a lead on certain things um, uh, we can designate that in the application. Well, maybe we should get the MAPC involved again. Yeah, in fact, um, um, so maybe if I, because I think everybody's ideas that I've heard are great, and I've tried to incorporate everything that you've espoused this morning into an application. And um, so I think we do need to figure out who our partners are going to be. And I think our partners should be MAPC, um, CTPS, CTPS for those of you who don't know who that is, that's Central Transportation Planning. They're the um, um, transportation experts for the Boston MPO and for MassDOT statewide. I think we should ask to partner yeah. with MassDOT um, because they have some things that I think are, are, are quite interesting. Um, whether or not there's something to involve Freedom's Way, I don't know. We'd have to figure that out at some point. But um, I think we, <laughs> there, there are experts and um, you know, we have our own internal experts in the, in the, in the towns and in the park. But um, one of the things that we want to do is have the strongest application as possible. So um, if I can share my screen. Well, can before, I, we, before we go on to like, yeah. we've decided all this. I, I just no, have I've, a question. We haven't decided uh, on anything. <laughs> okay. Um, I wanna go back to what Beth raised about safety along the corridor mm -hmm. and um, our previous discussions about crosswalks um, over 2A and the parks, um, had a conversation with Simone, a meeting with Simone, and that they're concerned with landings and connections within the park. And couldn't we wrap this up? Talk about synergy here. Um, 
with getting those connections that this grant could go towards those connections um, and the greater plan that the park may have for for footpaths. It's a great idea, Paula. Yeah. I mean, it's. What do you think, Jennifer? Um, I will. Yeah, I just made a note of that. I can't say for certain if we have funding secured for the trail. Con it's a trail con connector mm -hmm. planning. Um, but I can certainly take that to Simone and uh, get mm -hmm. get some feedback on that because if we're looking for money, if there's a way to move this federal money into our <clears throat> federal opportunity, yeah, um, that's something to consider for sure because that would push it along, and as you said, Paula, meet the goals of um, mm -hmm. crosswalk safety and the accessibility. Yeah, and, um, and it could be. I I'm not saying I'm an expert in this in any sense. Of it was a quick read. But um, that the the park could be the matching funds, but the bulk would come from this grant, <clears throat> and, and so that would I love really, that idea. That would really lessen the uh, financial impact on the park. And I think also it would be doing the protection of the cultural and archaeological resources that we're talking about. Yes, because one of the things that we did when we were looking at the trails was one of them was going right into an archeological site, which we didn't know and MassDOT didn't know. I think they know now, they've been back yeah. out there looking at everything. But, um, you know, you I think that- specific about that? They're looking at what and they found what? One of the trails that we were looking at for 2A led right to an archeological site. I think it was near the Paul Maybe. Revere no, yeah. I think it was the Minuteman, uh, Minuteman, Minuteman right. School right. Crosswalk. Was right. that then identified as an archaeological site through yes, Mass Pirate? Well, Jen? Yeah, I don't have a comment on that. Yeah. Um, it's what have, Simone where, told us. Well, they're looking at it. They're, they're looking yeah, they're, at it. Yeah. When, to when to we, make sure. Hmm? When you guys had a walk out there. Or no, when, they, I'm they, trying to remember. I'm just trying to remember where when that came up and mm -hmm. was it ever documented or? It, it hasn't been. They're looking at it, Nancy. There's no like. Oh, so they're it, looking at it. It's just a general look at the archaeology along. Just to make the yeah, make of, sure you know, that what happened there. To, yeah, and, make sure they don't step in an archaeological and, site. Well, one of her letters did reference that. Um, Right, and that was the, the main highway where um, the remains of British soldier were unearthed. Yeah. So. They're being careful. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. so nothing new. Okay, got it, got it, thank you. Could could we go back just to TTPS and uh, I, I know I didn't get this um, inserted when Richard first meant it or mentioned it, but can you say what they do? and why their partner would be partners. Okay, so what they do, so it's interesting because the Boston MPO is different from, there's 14 MPOs in the whole state and in all the other MPOs, um, the regional planning agency are the transportation staff to the MPO. In Boston, um, MAPC's role, they do have transportation expertise, but uh, in Boston, um, they rely, uh, we rely more on CTBS. CTBS is okay. an arm of MassDOT and they do central planning for all of Massachusetts. Yeah. Plus, so they're the primary people who do the transportation planning for the Boston region, which is 100 and close so to how about do they? How do they help us as a partner? Um, how do they help? Because they I have. I mean, the name, the name, sort of self-explanatory on yeah. some level. Because they have transportation expertise, and um, um, I think, again, one of the things I try to do is, you know, the key is you write the grant to the criteria and to what people are expecting, and so. Um, um, Okay, so you know, what, these people have unique knowledge of transportation that these other groups don't. Right. And I mean, MAPC has certain um, expertises, and I think they should be the primary one, but uh, um, 
Okay. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt the chain of oh, thought. Okay. So part of the premise of the proposal, um, whether or not we do anything, whether it affects um, the Route 2A resurfacing, is mass dot um, has keeps telling us that we have to worry about the 85th percentile. And that's the only thing that they want to worry about. Except they have this new program where they talk about um, speed management and they tell towns go off and do um, something different. Figure out what you want the roadway to be, set a target speed, and then figure how do you get cars to drive at the target speed. And um, I think um, because this is a fairly new program, I think a lot of people aren't quite sure what to make of this and how it fits into the 85%. So that's why I think MassDOT would be really interested in MAPC and other folks interested in um, a particular grant proposal that we might have. Yeah, I got it. Okay. And Paula, did you have anything more to say on that? About the 85th percentile, I think. No, 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 on, on sort of the connections to pathways and the uh, matching funding, maybe from the park or from others. Yeah, well, because I think- I know Richard either. had something he wanted to share in terms of some ideas. Is well, it I just, I, <laughs> I just think that um, having the park as a partner would is going to be paramount and seen very, uh, seen very well by the, the grant committee, having the regional planning agency, MAPC is always good. Um, but I think that's a, that's a pretty strong, and in all the, the cities and towns, I think, I think that's a pretty strong block. I don't think we need to go looking for 10,000 partners just oh, to, oh, but, but I agree with Richard to a certain extent that you write the grant and be able to check off the criteria as mm -hmm. anybody who's written grants knows, but having a, uh, a clear vision and strong partners is, it, it, I think is, is, is very strong way to approach a grant. Um, and and it, it seems to dovetail well with existing projects and existing goals of MassDOT, of the park, and of um, you know the discussions with this committee as well as as the towns, so I think it checks a lot of the boxes, and it's I, right in the I of agree something with, we're trying to yeah, do now. I agree with Paul, and I think what we <clears throat> um, we've spent an awful lot of time talking about Route Two A, and the really important thing for me in my looking at this committee is we should be celebrating the two hundred and fiftieth anniversary of our country. And that's why I think having the park be the focus of this grant is really paramount because that is such an important part of what's gonna happen, you know, in a couple of years. And I think that that will raise the application up higher than anything else. Do we have to uh, guess a particular dollar figure uh, or estimate it? Uh, in connection with this? I suppose we do, right? I think and, by the time we do the real application, we do need to rough out how much it's gonna cost. Okay, but right now we don't. And I think, you know, we, yeah. we obviously should be shooting for like a $2 million grant and figure what can we get for $2 million? I can come up with some prices. That's mm -hmm. what I do for a living. Right. Great, I, and I have one more. If we were going to do more than ask for more than one, but we could kind of, we could put the, the signage, the signage for the Battle Road Byway. Um, that's something we've been talking about for years and years. <laughs> it's beautifully designed as Clarissa said, and the byway really should be marked. We don't want too many signs. We don't want, collision of signs, <laughs> but I think we could dovetail that with this project of the, this pedestrian improvement project 
um, and then maybe we get up to our $2 million uh, yep. objective. But I think you know, you're talking about components of one application. Yes, yes, I am, Nancy, thank so, you. So that may be the same kind of thing Richard was hinting at, I don't know. And, it, and it's wonderful, by the way, that Beth Williams is sitting here and going like this, because <laughs> when we did the All-American Road, Richard wrote the grant, but there were <laughs> some very talented editors. Mm -hmm. One of them happens to be Paula, and the other one is mm -hmm. on maternity leave. But it would be great, Beth, if you could be the editor of whatever mm -hmm. we're doing, because that's a very important step. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to review everything. Wonderful, wonderful. That makes Paula very happy <laughs> and would make Allie very happy. <laughs> So like multiple set of eyes on everything. But I think um, sort of to bring this group back together, I think for the purpose of this meeting, we are committing to writing a letter of intent. We have identified a rough scope, right? We're gonna put as much as we can into the grant, ask for whatever, you know, and, and then we'll have to get to the application process, right? I think, was I right <laughs> that the purpose of today was just to determine, yes, we're moving forward and we're going to we're going to get the letter of intent off the ground in the next few days mm -hmm. um and then start to get some prices if so, you're, I, you know. i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah go ahead i've yeah. heard two areas of interest signage and safety mm -hmm. um but i haven't heard anything about i mean what's going to really support um um the protection of the scenic historical blah 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 resources um, and I'm wondering, I didn't look carefully, I'm assuming maybe um, uh, better, better work along, for instance, Route 2A is probably not eligible because it's, um, it's not routine maintenance, it would be um, something like, a, more like a capital investment project with stone walls and uh, with uh, cleaning up the right of way, things like that. Are those kinds of things eligible? I didn't, I didn't look far enough to know if actual work or is this all sort of, signage would be actual work. You would have to buy them mm -hmm. and install them. So could you also do landscape maintenance, say a lot mm -hmm. anyway? Yep. I don't know about maintenance. I think maintenance, no. maintenance. Well, we'd have to call it something beyond maintenance. It's not routine maintenance. It's no. not right. It's restoration or rehabilitation. Yes. You could um, have restoration of the different urban, than, <coughs> of sorry, the trees. Hmm? I'm sorry. You could yeah. have um, preservation or restoration of the tree cover along 2A, and that would be looking at the historic. Um, old trees and, and preserving them. I'm, I'm also talking about- uh, And stone uh, walls, that stone kind of thing. wall rehabilitation yeah. and clearing out um, the vegetation from both sides. Yeah. So there's some kind yeah. of a, a better perception well, I think this, of the historic stone walls that are now pretty well. Yeah, I agree. I had a tour with Nancy and we saw a lot of decrepit stone walls that could be fixed up. Yeah, I think some some of that might be covered. I, I'm, I'm a little questionable about whether removing the invasives is not just regular maintenance. And I mm -hmm. don't think we want to get caught in them no, saying no. this is, you know, routine. Well, stuff. first of all, first of all, you investigate that so you don't get caught in anything mm -hmm. that you can't fund. So I don't think that's a hard thing to verify. And I think sometimes it matters a lot from how you call it, what you call it. Um, routine maintenance is no, a whole thing. I think you, you better, you might be better off with the, with the restoration of the uh, historic stone walls and not oh, talking I'm about thinking. clearing out invasives. I didn't mm -hmm. say anything about invasives. I'm talking that's about stone walls and, um, and clearing, clearing away, you know, what obscures the stone walls. And that's not routine maintenance. I mean, sometimes root, routine maintenance means you come with that Caligula-like machine and chop off the trees vertically. I mean, that's, that's routine maintenance for mass highways sometimes. I um, also sorry, think sometimes- Tim, Sorry, Tim, that's, that's a terrible machine, but- um, I also think for the purposes of grant, 
sometimes less words is better. Um, like leaving it a little vague. Like in it, uh, sometimes you can get yourself in trouble by putting too much details. I that's absolutely true. I agree with that hundred percent. So I would just like to see something that's more direct, very directly related to the protection of, um, you know, the scenic resources and the historic resources of the byway and how, you know, the people who, who come along um, the whole byway every day, you know, it would be great if in Arlington Center, you saw something that was repeated um, uh, within the National Park area of the byway or out by Barrett's Farm in Concord. And one of the things that began to um, appear within the parks section of uh, um, the byway are these um, granite markers. They're granite mile markers, but it could be something, um, they're like what you can see there behind Richard, but it could be something like that or you know just that would fit in with everybody's landscape but when you were in Arlington Center you would see something and you would say oh it's the byway and maybe the byway logo is burnt into it or something like that so that so that you begin to recognize that along the entire length. George, um, uh, you know that's kind of what we were hearing the other day too some 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 thematic element that linked all these things together visually. So I don't know exactly what that is, but I see. Would, uh, would development of a smartphone app for tourists um, be kind of too far afield from what we're talking about? Or might that be something we can fold it, in? It could be a portion of it. That's interesting. Yeah, because if we're going to have these uh, markers along the way, I mean, you need, you need to find them. Mm -hmm. and I think people would have a lot of fun yeah. navigating. Along yeah, it's the quite. It's, yeah, I think it's quite expensive right. to do that, but we could get a quote from the people that did the original graphic signage and find out how much it would be. Um, it would be expensive to do the app or to do the yeah. markers. No, to do the app, the markers themselves. I mean, granted, yeah. it's expensive, but it's not that expensive. Yeah, and the engraving is is not. You know, there are lots of good people that do that kind of work. Mm -hmm. But it's making the app, I think, is more expensive. I can more try to find out about it. Yeah. It's a nice idea, Bob. I like uh, that idea. I do too. Jennifer, do people do people use those kind of apps in the national park? Um, so yeah, it's interesting. I was flashing back to when I worked in East Tennessee and there was a huge tourism push for their scenic byway program. And oh. they developed a printed brochure that was um, just, it's a little overwhelming because it fold, it was, a, it was a rectangular, but then it folded out to be eight and a half by 11 and it was multiple pages and the print was really small. So, um, <laughs> oh, I think, you know, that was, it was their way of creating an app before apps existed. So in the National Park Service, we are definitely moving away from printed material for cost mm -hmm. savings. And parks that have adequate um, cellular service are using a, uh, a agency-wide app. So it's the National Park Service app. And within it, you can click on each park. And then each park builds the content. So to answer your question about who's using it, it's still a little bit of a mix because I think a lot of our um, visitation, and I would even rec I would even suggest the folks that travel on their Sunday road drives, um, maybe folks that aren't using smartphones, they may be using flip phones. So I don't know 100% what okay. the user rate would be, but that's those are some of the things I think about when I think how are we going to reach our audience? Is who's using what technology? Yeah. Um, does that have a name? I think you said it, but I'm, I wanted to write it down. Oh, um, so if you were to look, the Park Service app is just, if you go to the app store and look for National Park Service, you'll see the I've arrow. I've seen there. it referenced. Yeah. Oh, Dick, <laughs> Richard has it, looks like. So there's a, a Shimani, um, and they have all of the parks. They, so here's a thing from Minuteman, uh, talks about Paul Revere, um, and there's a there, there are ads on this too. 
um, but it links to the park's website and all that sort of stuff. I think it is the way of the future. And if we're talking about a project that's going to take two years to complete or a year to complete, then we're getting closer to the audience that will be the user group. So I think that would be our, our direction to lean in. The, the other thing is I think we need to take into consideration is, is that um, in the past, um, the byway grants were yearly and they were, um, and so now that they've been restored, um, I think we can sort of try and figure out, you know, what is our first step and then what would we want to do in succeeding years to apply? Um, I mean, like Jacob's Ladder, um, you know, for 10 years in a row, they got federal grants. Um, and, you know, a million dollars a year for 10 years adds up. Um, so, you know, we can't do everything at once. And so part of it is, you know, what are the, what are the first things that we want to ask for? Jen? You're muted, Jen. Um, because I had trouble getting in and it's my unsavvy way of using a uh, computer. I missed the beginning. Do, does drainage fit into this? Because the park, I mean, because Mass, I kept saying it was gonna be, um, you know, paving and drainage. But when you look at what their drainage solutions are, they're abysmal. And so you know, if you're clearing stone walls, you're going to have- Hello. Oh. Hi. Carissa? Anyway, I don't know if that's appropriate for this discussion. I just want to make sure it was. Okay, uh, thank you. Noted. Okay, any other? Um, Richard, did you have something you wanted to share that was visual? Sure. Yeah. So, let me see if I can find what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So, what I did is I, it's a fillable form. So I started to fill it out. And what I did is looked at the criteria, looked at what the four goals were, what the nine areas of interest are and tried to write something to meet that. Um, it's fairly ambitious, but I wanted to talk about three dimensions and we can sort of figure out whether any of this makes any sense or not. So, Obviously, Mass Commonwealth Mass is the applicant. Um, and we got Chris Clem as the main point of contact and then Nancy um, for the byway um, uh, point of contact. And who are the cooperating partners? So the byway committee, the towns of Arlington, Concord, Lexington, Lincoln, the park, uh, MAPC, MassDOT, the MPO, um, which Chris sort of said, you know, that they might provide matching funds. Um, mm -hmm. It may be Freedom's Way. I'm not sure, um, you know, what the connection might be, but I just Actually, want to- Actually, I'll be, I'll be talking with Patrice um, hopefully next week. Right. And, I, um, I just wanted to throw those out just to say, here are some possible things. Um, um, the name of the byway, Battle Road Scenic Byway, it's Small America Road. And, um, what I wanted to do was to, how do you, you know, look at the four goals? And so what I said is that the title might be safety, accessibility, and stewardship for byway visitors and the public um, to try and meet <laughs> all four goals. Um, and uh, it says it's a 250 word wow. maximum, but when I tried to paste in 250 words, they wouldn't all fit. So I had to delete a few things. And so again, to try and speak to the criteria, I said the project expected to significantly improve byway accessibility to people of all ages, abilities, incomes, and ethnicities. The entire byway will be equitably accessed by pedestrians, bicycles, people with disabilities, mass transit riders, and motorists. Um, and um, one of the things improve access to the byway for bicycles and pedestrians. Uh, one of the things that we, talk about in the plan and we sort of talked about is, you know, how do you get people, first of all, to the byway? And, um, you know, we have a couple of commuter rail stops, um, you know, that, um, you know, can help bring people as, as well as motorists. You know, if you go to Ill Wife, um, you know, there's the bikeway to get you to the byway and so forth. So 
how much we want to include in that, I don't know, but again, trying to look at the criteria. And so we said working with state, federal, local, regional, and non-governmental agencies and the public study. And so one of the things would be to do what MassDOT says we should be doing. Um, look at the whole byway and say during different sections, what do we think a target motor vehicle speed should be? That's what MassDOT advocates. And then how do you develop plans for traffic calming or other things to try and get motorists to travel at that to make it safe for cyclists and pedestrians. And this would include signage to achieve those speeds, implement interpretive and directional signage. Um, work with the towns and the park and MassDOT to achieve consistency for safety and stewardship. All work would be in coordination with the management plan as well as local park state guidelines and MassDOT speed management guidelines will be a key basis. Um, and um, project improve um, safety, increase equity and accessibility, provide for increased economic development to provide for increases in visitorship and achieve climate and sustainability goals through transportation policies. Um, so what I tried to do was to say, um, build on you know, the federal byways need for equity, um, accessibility, um, and stewardship. Um, so there are four goals um, that we can apply under safety, equity, accessibility, economic strength, and climate and sustainability. And I think we should come up with a project that meets oh, all of those. Stewardship's not ex exactly there, so. Um, well, it says um, that uh, in coordination with the scenic byway management plan. No, I know, all but, about stewardship. Um, but we're only applying under these four goals. Or well, that's those are the only four goals there are. I know, but then there's project types, and right. I see that you're coming to that. And so, you know, what are the project types that would? Um, okay, we're not planning a byway program because we already have one. Um, so, um, implement a corridor management plan to maintain scenic, historical, recreational, cultural, and natural characteristics while providing for accommodation of increased tourism. So that starts to get at the stewardship. Safety improvements um, to the extent they're necessary to accommodate increased traffic and changes of type of vehicles. So, and you are you you're going down still, right? Right, and construction along the scenic byway of a facility for pedestrians and bicyclists, turnouts, shoulder improvement, and so forth. And, um, you know, we're not really water related recreation, so five I don't think applies. Protection of scenic historical creation. Richard, Richard, a question? Yep. Uh, I think we could use five because it's accessing an area for the purpose of recreation. It says including water related okay. recreation. Yeah. It doesn't need to be water related recreation. Yeah, I suppose. Um, but I wanted to try and figure, you know, I mean, if we say we're going to do all nine or all eight, um, I was just trying to figure out which ones are most important to us. And well, that's essentially the only thing that we can. <laughs> That's the letter of intent. So well, I've thrown a lot of things and um, um, wanted to see if we get some reaction to how it fits into what everybody has been saying up to this point. Well, Maybe. I feel like our, our discussion has mentioned about four different uh, areas to focus on and we need to merge those areas with the document you've created. Uh, I mean, we've gotten a lot more specific in our discussion today than this right. document is. I tried to make so, it generic yeah. because we haven't met. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, just rattling it off here, we got uh, Nancy mentioned preservation of viewscapes uh, and uh, historic mm -hmm. uh, uh, markers, um, stone walls, um, signage, obviously, access trails within the park, maybe smartphone app. Uh, so people can navigate and have some fun uh, going down the byway. Um, so yeah, all of that, I, I guess, would be fair, fair to put into this document, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I agree uh, with you, yeah. Bob. I mm -hmm. think this, yeah. what Richard has written is a good first draft. It's yeah. very, 
you know, the world is, <laughs> we don't mention the 250th um, anniversary of our country. And I think having some specific examples make it um, more helpful. I agree uh, with both Bob and Clarissa, and I, I understand why Richard wrote it this way to begin mm -hmm. with, but when, uh, when we're actually putting in a notice of intent, I think we, we have some specifics that we'd like to work on. Um, and from what I read on the website, they, they want you to be more specific. They don't want just a general repetition of their own goals right so they want to see how what it is you're proposing right so there's two things in. one is the letter of intent and the other is the actual application and the app actual application is the place to put the specifics i think you need to put it in the in the letter of intent as well right i agree but you know we get we've got 250 words and um, right. So, but I, but I think we can. You've, you know, the 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 general two hundred and fifty words that you put in, I think, can certainly be cut down and say mm -hmm. what it is you said, yeah, exactly. and you know, specifically to you know for for historic the the stewardship we're we're looking Preparation. to. Stewardship, 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 and president. Sorry, Nancy. Uh, no, stewardship. Right. We we are we are looking to rehabilitate historic stone walls. You know the blah blah <coughs> the, the revolution, and um, to accommodate increased tourism expected for the two hundred and fiftieth celebration. You know people will be coming multimodal uh, users. We are we are looking to. Um, coordinate with an existing MassDOT project to safely take pedestrians from one side of the park to the other. And, you know, so get, it doesn't have to be fully explained, but it's much more specific than just repeating the same, you know, five paragraphs of the same kind of thing. And, um, Keeping on that same idea, Richard, if you could go back up to the previous section, um, there's lots, lots of language. I'll keep going. Lots of language here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems to me to be largely, um, not largely, but often is redundant and and right. mostly mm -hmm. transportation, transportation related. So I think that that could be that could be collapsed and leave space for these other things that like mm -hmm. fall in. Is, is uh, uh, excuse me, is, is Beth going to be the one to pull this together? Or Richard? She said she'd or... review. Is she still on the line? She might have had to leave. She no, have... I'm here, but um, I'd rather not draft it. I'm happy to review it. Oh, OK. Ah, OK, so oh, is Richard volunteering to, to do a draft of, of this? For all of us, how is this going to work? I, I could help um, suggest some ways to condense um, the 250 words here that Richard was having trouble with. Yeah, I think I if only that's, if that's a goal. I think that's 20 words, sir. Or so. I'm sorry. I think I was, I could only physically paste in 220 words. It yeah. cuts off of everything else. Yeah. It's form. Well, it's always true that if you have more time, you can make things shorter. So right, um, right, this was right. a first stab and I think, right. you know, lays out. I think there's, you could sort it through the redundancy there. And then add things like this, more specific things like stone walls or markers or um, uh, the signs, where would they go? What would they look like? More or less, more or less very high level. Um, the app, I really like that app, and it seemed like something that made sense to Jennifer in terms of where the park service is going and other places are going in the future. And what else was there? Um, the connections. So you've got, you've that got goes four things. Safety. safety. That, that would fall under safety, right? Yep. And access. And pedestrian and... Um, access. And access. Yeah, okay. 
tourism. So, yeah, to, so to get yeah to get this ahead, document to, uh, no, to get this document uh, done in the next few days, do we have a way to navigate through this consistent with the open meeting law? Uh, no. no. Heather. Yeah. <laughs> Where's that? Um, two people can confer. <laughs> yeah, I think the committee needs to vote to authorize two people to. But can't can't work together. Several, can't several people um, uh, give ideas and input to a document um, to one or two people, and then they can be consolidated and presented back. I make a motion that we but it's we a get. Um, I make a motion that we have we authorize Richard and. Um, Nancy to collaborate on reworking the front section and then that we authorize Bob and Beth to review it. Okay. That's my motion. I'll, I'm okay with that. You want to second the motion? I'll second it. Okay, Nancy, now we need to, to take a no, vote. No, no, I want to ask Heather, what does she think about that? Well, people can't comment on, like, people can't provide edits to a document um, with outside, you know, outside of a meeting. So there needs to be a motion like Clarissa made to authorize specific people to do it. Um, okay. Yeah. So the motion seems, seems solid. Yeah. And there's a second. Okay. Um, do you want to repeat the motion or did you take it down, Clarissa, or anybody? I, I made the motion that Nancy and Richard collaborate on editing the first section to um, shorten it. And then Bob and Beth um, look at what they've done and comment on it. And then what happens after that? And then who did, where did the comments go? Yeah, they exactly. go into the letter of intent and then we send it. And right. who does who decides? And how's it decided? Does it go back to the committee? No, don't take it back to the committee. Well, Just we can't. The time frame is really bad. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got we've got so the we've letter about two intent, weeks. The letter of intent isn't gospel, so no, it isn't. So right. I think, and you know. Um, Heather is more rigid about this than I am, and I've been an elected official for a long time. I think we can. I think we can do it. I think you might show it to the committee, but I don't think we have another meeting to accept it. No, we can, yeah, I agree. Yeah, we can. And we with, can send out the final version to everyone to look at. Yeah, but exactly. People can't email back stating, "Oh, change this." Change exactly that. right. That's right. So and there's, there's a meeting Thursday that Chris Clemens. Two meetings. Okay, folks, I've got to go. Um, I have to decide about flowers. Lovely to see you all. Are you well, are you gonna okay. vote us on your motion? Uh, oh yes. Charges. Arlington charges, Arlington yeah. votes yes. Yeah. All right, hey, George. Yes. <laughs> Lincoln votes yes. Um, she, votes yes. She will vote yes. Yes. Park votes, yes. Okay, motion passes. I guess we have our work cut out for us. Thanks everybody. Are we done? All right, so when is yeah. Chris Clem's meetings? Thursday, um, I have it somewhere here. We have Thursday a at 11. I'm sorry? Thursday at 11. That's the first one. And then the second one is like two to four, two to something or three to 4.30. I have it on my phone. There's my phone. So who's going to, so at least one or two of us should attend the meeting. Is that correct? Yeah, I'll be attending both. Okay, great. The, so, the overview webinar um, is Thursday from 2.30 to 4. Yeah. Nancy? Yeah. Jane? Who, said, who said that? Jane. Oh, Jane. Jane, yeah. A couple on, on um, Richard's, he, um, an introductory 
statement. He refers to 2021 battle road. Does he mean 2012? 2021. You have that's, a scenic byway management plan of 2021? Yeah, that's the that's the last time we revised it for the for the um all, all right, right. I, I, that, I, I didn't know what it was. And the other thing is the bus um goes from Alewife all the way to Hanscom through I think all three of the towns. So you know it isn't whenever it runs. <laughs> it runs all the time. So so I just wanted to make sure that you have that bus connection because the train doesn't exactly go through these towns. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jan. Um, okay. Do we uh, want Richard, to, could you so, share? Could you share this? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll 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 send it to uh, the committee and anybody who was here today. Okay. And all right, is there anything else? Is Paula still with us? I am. I got I got two minutes. Anything else? Good. I'm gonna okay. Do We'll What's give it a Do you have anything so else? I Can question. I just ask quickly what the timeline is? So if Richard and... So the question gonna... is the accessibility part. Do we want to leave that in there or take it out? Wait, why would you take it out? I don't know. I'd leave it in there. Okay. You That's can say access know. and that includes ease of access as well as accessibility. It can be conflated okay. or yeah, okay. go one way. All right. Okay. Less is more. Less is more. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Um, if there's no other, no other comment or discussion, Tim, you don't have anything to say. <laughs> I'm over here, Jaron. <laughs> okay. Is there a second for that motion? Second. Okay. Arlington votes. George. Okay. Or Lexington? Yes. We'll come back to Arlington. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Lincoln? Yes. Uh, yes. And Concord? Yes. And the National Park? Yes. Okay. And George? I, yes. Clarissa voted yes already. Hi, George. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're adjourned. Right, Thanks, right. everybody.